Greetings. Today we're going to discuss the atom and its structure. We are going to focus on a couple of goals. Our goals are to learn about the basic structure of prop and properties of atoms and to be able to obtain information about atoms from the periodic table. Now, why do we want to learn about atoms? Well, everything is made up of atoms. You know this. Everything. Everything we see, everything we touch, everything that's around us. Atoms, if you remember, are the smallest piece of matter that has the chemical properties of the element. So they are extremely important to us, and we must know something about them if we're going to be able to learn some chemistry. I'm going to have to take this call. Sorry. Hello? Hi, Tia. It's Gus. I really need some science help. Uh Oh, okay, sure. Uh, wh what's up, Gus? Uh, what kind of help do you need? Well, atoms make up everything, right? Yes, atoms make up everything. Yes, you're right. Why can't I find them? Um... What do you mean, uh, you can't find them? I've been looking for two hours, and no matter where I look, I can't find them. You've been looking for atoms for two hours? Uh, using what? I use my mom's glasses, my magnifying glass, and even the light microscope I got for Christmas. Oh, Gus, uh, I'm afraid you won't be able to find them that way. Um, so you see, atoms are too tiny. You can't find them. Even with a light microscope, you can't see them. The only way to see an atom is using a microscope called a scanning tunneling microscope, STM. Um, it was developed in 1981, so not too long ago. Um, so, you know, you, you, you're not, just not going to be able to do that. Well, where can I find one of those microscopes? Uh, well, you actually could contact a supply house, but the only problem is that um, the cheapest one costs about $8,000. $8,000? $8, that stinks. Bummer. Bye, Tia. Thanks. Oh, hey, hey, Gus. Hello? Hey, I was going to show you a picture. Oh, well. Well, sorry about that interruption, but um, I I was going to show Gus a picture, but hey, I might as well show you since we're talking about atoms. Here's a picture of a tunneling microscope. It's pretty cool looking. I um, I've actu I actually had the opportunity to look at one, uh, one of these ones. Um, Pretty cool. You can actually see the cloud, the electron cloud. Right here I have an atom of lithium. So we're going to talk about the parts that make up an atom. There are three subatomic particles that make up the atom. We have here lithium, and we have the neutrons, which are in yellow. And we have the protons in red. And we have the electrons in lighter yellow, I suppose. Notice that there are symbols that we use for each of these to denote each one. And um, we can say that a neutron is, we used this symbol, N0. The reason is because neutrons have no charge. Protons have a positive one charge, so we write P plus, and electrons E minus. And then we have uh, the this representation is actually the Bohr model, which, of course, now that you know the development of the atomic theory, you understand that this is not the correct model. But it is very helpful because it helps us visualize what we have here. Notice that there are three protons in the nucleus and four neutrons in this uh, nucleus. The mass number here uh, would be four plus three, which is equal to seven. And this would, these would be the number of electrons, three of them. All right, we'll, we'll come back to this a little later. Now, take a look at this. This is the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. 
and this is the cloud diagram. So in a tunneling microscope, you might see something similar to this, uh, to this image. You will actually see the, uh, you may not see the nucleus at all, but you might, may see the cloud that the electron that is moving very, very fast around the nucleus uh, makes. Before we talk about the specific parts of the, or the subatomic particles, I want you to learn a little bit about atomic mass units also known as AMUs. You see, because atoms are so very, very tiny, grams and kilograms are too large. So I want to talk about atomic mass units before going on to talking about subatomic particles. The atomic mass unit, also abbreviated as AMU, uh, represents 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So because atoms are so tiny, grams and kilograms really are too large or convenient to for us to represent the mass of an atom, which is so, so tiny. So for every 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny portion of gram, uh, we call that 1 AMU. It's pretty much like dozen to 12 to uh, mole to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, uh, and 1 AMU equals 1.66 times 10 to the 24th. The mass of an atom in AMUs uh, takes into account the protons and the neutrons, and we're going to discuss that and talk about that in a moment. All right, so let's take a look at this table that I have here. Uh, we have information and characteristics of each one of the the subatomic particles, protons, they're located in the nucleus, as well as the neutrons. Their mass is equivalent to 1 AMU, which as you know, we have already discussed what AM, 1 AMU is, equivalent to in grams. And notice that the charge of protons is positive 1, the charge of neutrons is 0, because neutrons are neutral, and the charge of electrons is negative but the mass is 0 0.00055 AMUs. This is a negligible mass. It is so tiny. It, as, uh, in comparison, it's 1 to about 2,000 in comparison in, as far as the masses go. So it, it's so negligible that we don't even pay attention to the mass of the electrons for our purposes. The periodic table. And we're going to start out with helium. And we're going to start out with this number 2 right over here. And this number two right over here represents the atomic number. The atomic number is extremely important because that not only identifies the atom, it tells us the number of protons present. In a neutral, in addition, in a neutral atom, that number two also tells us the number of electrons. So Helium has two protons and two electrons. We don't know how many neutrons it has until we focus on this number. And you have already uh, identified this number before as the molar mass, uh, but we're also going to identify it as the atomic, uh, the atomic mass of the atom in AMUs, 4.0026, is the mass of one atom of helium in AMUs. But we also can identify that, that number if we round it off as the mass number. So right now I want you to remember this number as the mass number, as the mass number. And it is also the atomic mass of the atom, which we'll get back to a little later on. In order to get the mass number, we must round off that number. It's 4.0026, so we're going to round it off to 4. So we have, once again, atomic number, 2, number of electrons in a neutral atom, 2, mass number, 4. This number, the mass number, represents the number of protons plus the number of neutrons equals our mass number. So we can calculate the number of neutrons by subtracting 
the mass number or the protons from the mass number. Pretty simple. We'll get back to that in a second. This symbol represents or is called sometimes element symbol or isotope symbol. It should also have a C here. This A and Z, I'm going to tell you what each one of those represents. This is the isotope symbol of an element. X represents the element symbol. A represents the mass number. Mass number. A is the mass number. Z is the atomic number. And C represents the charge. All right. So keeping this in mind, we can look at this symbol and calculate what it represents. So let's take a look at this. Quick review. Atomic number, protons, identifies the, the atom. The mass number, this number, rounded off to the nearest whole number, represents the number of protons plus neutrons. So now we're going to go ahead and decipher this information and put it into the isotope symbol. Let's look at this atomic number for this element and purposely I chose a different format so you can see it's always the whole number so the atomic number here is 92. We said that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons and it identifies the atom. Remember that it doesn't change. So this is 92. It's always constant for uranium. The number of electrons would be in a neutral atom would be equal to the number of protons. Because if it's neutral, you're going to have the same number of positive charges as you have negative charges. And then the atomic mass would be the mass listed here in AMUs, which would be 238.03 AMUs. That didn't come out very well, but you know it's AMUs. All right. The mass number is the atomic mass rounded off to the nearest whole number. So the number would be 238. Now, how can we find the number of neutrons? They're not anywhere to be found here. But we know that this number rounded off to the nearest whole number is equivalent to the protons plus the neutrons. So I'm going to say 92 protons plus protons, let's say protons, plus uh, neutrons equals 238. Simple algebra tells me that I'm going to subtract 92 from this side and 92 from this side. So 238 minus 92. That's a 2. Is equal to 146. So there are 146 neutrons in uranium in this particular isotope. I've been using the term isotope. So let me tell you a little bit about what that means. An isotope is an atom that has the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. So it is possible for an atom to have a variation of uh, different neutrons. For example, uranium has five different isotopes in that are naturally occurring. Remember, an isotope has the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. So in the mixture, you can find atoms that contain, all, all of them contain 92 protons, but they may have a variation of neutrons. That is an isotope. And we'll address that later on in the next podcast. Now it's your turn. I want you to pull out your periodic table and I want you to gather this information for chlorine.
false, do not go on, and go ahead and find the information. And then, and only then, move forward and obtain the answers. Here are the answers. How did you do? Have a wonderful, wonderful day. See you in class.